Hello guys, we're down here at UMKC and I'm here to ask the students that walk on by a trick question. I wanted to give you guys a heads up of what's happening. First of all, here's the question. So this question is completely hypothetical. All the numbers are totally made up. Okay. Okay. But it's like, what would you do if you were president style question? Okay. So here's the question. Over the last 10 years, America has had a quota of 100,000 Chinese immigrants coming in per year. Mm -hmm. And uh, same for Japan, 100,000 coming in uh, immigrants per year from Japan. Mm -hmm. And we go back and we look at the data over the last decade. And it turns out that the Chinese immigrants are really, really good for this country financially. They pay a lot more in taxes than they take in welfare. Mm -hmm. And for the Japanese, it's the inverse. They pay, take a lot more in welfare than they do uh, in taxes. Mm -hmm. The question is, if all other things are equal, how much crime they commit, how desperate the situations they're coming from, if all other things are equal, would you use this data to perhaps raise the quota on some and lower the quota on others? What would you do with that information if you were the president and you're the decision maker? Now you might have noticed that was a trick question because I'm not really interested in what the students had to say about the immigration policy. I'm curious as to how they react and if they confront the question head on. The question is trick because it's basically a question of if you were the president of the United States, would you do something that would help the United States and didn't affect the rest of the world negatively in any way? The answer should be a no-brainer, yes. But because it's on the sensitive topic of immigration, I think we're going to see a lot of evading and a lot of people just going back to cliches like uh, diversity is strength and I'm all for equality and things like that. Now you'll notice some key components to the question. The first thing is I do is I say, do you want to increase quotas or decrease quotas? And the reason I say that is because I think a lot of people are trained to just think like xenophobic or bigoted or anything like that, especially on college campuses. The idea is quick, call someone a bigot or a xenophobe before someone calls you a bigot or a xenophobe and it's a defense mechanism and by saying we're offering to increase the quotas it kind of disarms the, that and takes that away the second thing I'll do is I'll say get all other things being equal and the reason I do that is so people can't get lost in the weeds there's a very clear example of some uh, nationality being better and some nationality being worse and I've also chosen some um, some nationalities that are not real hot buttons I haven't chosen like Syria or you know Saudi Arabia or anything like that I've gone for a Chinese and Japanese because there's, there's not a lot of emotions around those things we're pretty comfortable with those kinds countries. So let's see if people can tackle this question head on, they can understand what's going on, or if they're going to run to cliches, or even more importantly, just avoid answering altogether. Let's take a look. Um, I feel it's unfair to not allow like an equal amount of different people to come into this country just because they might benefit more economically. However, it is a country and you need to do things that are economically beneficial. So I think some changes need to be made within the country to allow individuals from different parts of the world to come in in equal amounts and not to cap some and raise it on some others because that feels in a sense wrong to me. I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> I'm a, I am a firm believer that, you know, everyone has equal rights to, to immigrate. Um, and if they, if they were from situations, if they were refugees. Well, it's the same. Same number of refugees <laughs> from China and Japan. I would say messing with the refugee numbers is not a thing because even if they're not economically productive, it's not right to turn them away from a refugee situation. But straight up immigrants? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe let in more immigrants from China and less from Japan. I think, uh, this is de I don't know, decrease the quotas. You would decrease the quotas. No, no, no increase, increase. You would increase the quotas. Yeah. Wait, On the quotas for the country to bring them in? Like, yeah. Okay. You'd I just, bring in more? Yeah, I think so, because more diverse is like, it's only a, it's like, you, it's like hypothetical, but it's only a couple of people that are doing those type of things. So, so you would increase the quota on both of them, both the Chinese and the yeah, Japanese, you'd increase the quota them, on both, both of them. them. Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't think I'd make a very good president, but uh, if I would have to do something, I think I would probably keep it the same and then just employ some sort of program that um, gets the Japanese in more involved, doing like projects similar to what they kind of did in the Great Depression, like work programs. Um, so they we wouldn't be spending so much on welfare and then they'd be doing stuff for our economy, like fixing things or picking up trash or something, something to benefit the economy that we wouldn't really have to pay for, then they get the benefit of helping the economy and we get the benefit of helping them. Um, I don't think that I, 
it, this is more like a personal value to me, but mm -hmm. I don't think that I would really change how I viewed the quotas. Um, it's interesting, and I think that I'd be more interested in figuring out the mechanism of what's causing the disparity than just, you know, blacklisting a whole group of people because of nationality. Gotcha. So it wouldn't be, you don't have to necessarily go to the level of blacklisting, but even reducing or increasing, you wouldn't do that? I don't think so. You're asking me if I would take those numbers and use that to determine whether or not... Yeah, I, would I you maybe them. increase the numbers or decrease the numbers or keep them the same or... Keep them the same. You keep them the same? Okay. I would say make it fair for or equal for both of them. Oh, if I was president, then I would try to do what's best for the country. So I would, um, you said the Chinese? The Chinese, but they're good for the country I financially. Would, okay, I would try to bring more of them in to help our country. Awesome. There's, what about with the Japanese? Would you reduce their number? Yes. Awesome. It's an impossible question to answer. Why is that? <laughs> because because if, if you make a choice, you know, of... Um, just diminishing the number of Japanese people coming here, it feels like wrong in some ways. Is that right? Even if you increase the number of Chinese, so you're still having the same number of immigrants, you're still helping the world in exactly uh -huh. the same way. The situation they're coming from is just as desperate. Um, but you, th you think it would be wrong in some way to say that you should choose the, the, well, America, the, the president, or let's I, say if you're the decision maker, the president of the United States. I you, think it, I think it will reflect, you know, in a way badly because I think what what works really well in, in, in a society it's the the mixing, right? Mm -hmm. It's the diversity, and the more you take, you know, I mean, people from just one one country, the more they're just going to form, you know, their own community and not just integrate in society. So I, I think I would I would go for diversity, even though the numbers are the same. Because in the end, I think it will, you know, maybe not the first years, but in 10, 15, 20 years, I think these people are going to assimilate to the population in a much better way. Okay. And if suddenly you have, a, you know, 150,000, you know, Japanese people or Chinese people versus, you know, 50,000 Chinese people. Okay. I guess I would do nothing. Do nothing? You wouldn't use that data to change the quotas on those two countries? No. Um, I think, so data is easily misinterpreted, especially if you don't have every, absolutely everything laid out and all the variables covered for. So I don't think I would take a plan of action, like anything drastic, like decreasing how many Japanese or increasing how many Chinese people I, I would let in. I think I would just, uh, you know keep it like if somebody wants to come into america yeah do the background search all the standard things do it for anybody and like treat them all the same because i don't think that um it would be like okay for me to like prevent somebody from coming into the country just because of what some numbers happen to average out to because averages can mean a million different things depending on the individual data points. So that's what I would do. I mean, at that point, you're probably getting about, like you said, everything is equal. You're getting the same gains. You're, you're gaining more from the Chinese, losing more from the Japanese. So everything's equaling out. So I don't really see a problem in it. I personally would not either really increase or decrease either one because it's just, I guess, circumstances like uh, with how much they're paying or how much gets paid out, how much uh, gets uh, taken out of the government and everything. It's more of a community kind of deal. So uh, whichever way it works, I mean, some people need more help than other people. Some people get more help or give more help. So so what did you think about those answers? Remember, it wasn't really, I didn't really care about the, uh, the immigration policy. What I care about is, are the students able to think? Can they process the information correctly? Do you think they processed the information correctly? Did you think they were acting out of fear? Did you think that they were trying to avoid the question, try to hide from the question and do anything they can to get involved in that situation? Were they virtue signaling? That's the question I'd love answered from you guys. So please go ahead, leave a comment in the description. If you liked or disliked this video, let me know with a thumbs up, thumbs down, and please subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.